This is the Bahrain International Defence Exhibition and Conference. Now, it's a 2017, the very first exhibition of its type here in Bahrain. There are 118 exhibitors from 60-odd countries, with 115 stands. And as you'll see around, on display is an awful lot of military hardware, which is not only strategic, but of course, sales are involved in this as well. The exhibition is under the patronage of His Highness Brigadier General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. Now, he was deputised at the press conference by Brigadier Hamid Al Noemi. Also on the press conference panel was His Excellency Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, who's chairman of Derasat, chairman of Memak as well. Sheikh Khalid bin Hamoud Al Khalifa, who's the CEO Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, and Tim Porter, who's managing director of Clarion Defence and Security. Well, with every exhibition, uh, there will always be sales. This is uh, obviously an exhibition. We have uh, more than 180 uh, exhibiting companies and with that obviously there's an uh, international appetite uh, there are delegations uh, from many different parts of the world participating and showing uh, keen an interest in uh, military equipment technology and systems the companies showcasing are exhibiting their uh, latest technologies uh, their latest systems their latest equipment uh, in a tri-service uh, Expo, which is the first in the in the in the region. There are uh, demonstrations uh, around the island. There's a shooting range. There's a parachute demonstrations. There's a, a ship displays. There's a vehicle displays all um, around Bahrain, different locations. So it all will happen uh, simultaneously. Uh, with the conference and with the exhibition. On the second day of this first Bidek, which ran from October the 16th to the 18th, Air Vice Marshal Sheikh Hamad bin Abdullah Al Khalifa announced that Bahrain will buy 16 new, with a possible 19 upgraded Lockheed Martin F 16V fighters, with other upgrades to the existing F 16 fleet, along with military equipment at a cost of $3.8 billion. This follows on from the Trump administration favoring Bahrain's capability and approving the Lockheed Martin sale earlier on in the year. Thank you, and Deborah Hayes for the Times newspaper in London. Um, um, why, why are you buying the F-16 um, instead of the F-35 or is there a restriction on the F-16 fighters? Well, the Bahrain Defence Force is going to have the F-35 and the Lockheed Martin is going to have the F-35. And the Bahrain Defence Force is going to have the F-35 and the Lockheed Martin is going to have the F-35. And are you worried that you know, getting fourth generation is going to be a bit outdated given that F-35s and fifth generation aircraft are going to start becoming more and more numerous? Yeah, the reason we uh, uh, decided to go for F-16 is that we do, we have F-16, and we are uh, capable of running F-16, both uh, flying and maintenance. So we, we don't have any problem running uh, some more F-16. Bahrain-based military equipment dominated the exhibition, but there was plenty to see from the various countries exhibiting. UK Trade and Investment Senior Press Officer, Defence and Security, Adam Thomas, who can always be found at such events, including the Bahrain Air Show, was quick to point out that several UK companies are supporting BIDEC and certainly exhibiting here. My name is uh, Richard Beetson. I work for a company called Pearson Engineering Limited, who are a United Kingdom-based company and we operate in the countermine and counter I and D environments. What we manufacture is front end equipment that can be applied or attached to any armoured vehicle from main battle tanks down to mine resistant ambush protected vehicles which move in front of the vehicle in order to detonate or clear out of the way mines whether they be anti-tank mines, anti-personnel mines or improvised explosive devices often found in terrorist or counterinsurgency operations. The intent is by detonating or clearing the mine in front of the vehicle is that the vehicle remains undamaged and more importantly the crew within the vehicle remain unscathed. We, we have two main core activities. We have combat engineering demining, which tends to go to ministries of defense, militaries around the globe. And then we have a second, which is more humanitarian post-conflict, where you would more likely see it in the United Nations operations or post-conflict uh, clearances of areas such as you might find in the Far East. Uh, we are operating out of the United Kingdom, but 90% of our uh, business is export business, including several of the GCC countries, including the Emirates, Bahrain, uh, Jordan, uh, and also uh, Oman. Uh, well, we're, we're delighted to be at BIDEC. Uh, we were invited by the Bahrain Defence Forces. 
uh, who we currently have a contract with in order to provide mine rollers for, for a number of their uh, armoured vehicles. Uh, I have met a lot of old friends here from the Bahrain Defence Force and will certainly be back again next year. So we are Pfizer Optics, a British company, um, all manufacturing, production, maintenance, support, uh, new product development is done in the UK uh, and most importantly with our global partners. Uh, our reason for being at BDEC is obviously to support uh, Bahrain with their uh, uh, venture of obviously launching the BDEC show which has been absolutely fantastic. So Pfizer Optics, as you can see, so we've got uh, night vision, uh, predominantly our, our main core products are night vision, uh, night vision weapon sites, uh, thermal vision, thermal observation, and also thermal sites and universal uh, capabilities. We have uh, the Pfizer Optics Collimator, which is a completely bespoke uh, product around the world, which is uh, heavily in use in the US and the UK and, other, and, and also now in the GCC. Uh, we also have uh, special projects where we're assisting in the calibration, maintenance and support so the full end-to-end -end spectrum of getting a product, uh, enabling the supply and support of uh, spare parts for their current equipment and also upgrading to ensure those products can be in service for, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, and we've had uh, great success in the last year, year and a half with really understanding what the end user, not only what their requirements are, but uh, a severe lack in support. Uh, for their currently invested equipment and also for new equipment and new technologies. So we're uh, looking to support people like Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, uh, the UAE, Amman um, and also Jordan uh, with their uh, willingness to progress in their uh, utilisation of current equipment um, and also upgrade certain pieces of equipment to ensure that budget which especially these times can be a little bit tight um, to stretch it even further. Um, working with the UK government we've got fantastic opportunities with a real push in the GCC um, to bring some technologies that not necessarily would have been uh, accessible for, for the nations in the GCC to, to now, now, now really you know, bear the fruits uh, for those nations. Um, so we've got some fantastic new bespoke bits of kit um, to you know, bring to the party which is great. My, my name is Brian Jeffrey from Savox Communications and I'm the Defence Sales Director. And we are a communications based company who do audio ancillaries and uh, uh, vehicle systems for the military, for the fire service, for the rescue, for quite a few different areas. So here we are offering our vehicle intercom system, which works on both boats and vehicles. And it's both a civilian use and a military use, so it's a dual use item. We also have vision systems where we have screens and cameras to put onto vehicles to give you 360 degree awareness of what's outside the vehicle before you leave the vehicle. And over here we actually have our soldier system where we have mounted and dismounted capability for people to go off a platform and still be able to send messages, video, information backwards and forwards. Uh, we're in service in four GCC countries at the minute. One very, very large proportion of the platforms use our equipment. So we've been quite happy, but we're always looking for more business, like, like everybody. And we do appreciate that it doesn't happen overnight. You know, we, we're very much a relationship company. We come in, we spend time, we build it up, we build up the trust. Because we've found working out here that trust is important. And we've also found that, you know, we have live equipment here. We have equipment that works. So we don't come out with brochures and PowerPoint. We actually bring equipment, demonstrate it, and let the customer test it to understand it works in their environment. I was not expecting a lot, being a small exhibition the first time, but it's been very, very good. We've had good support. We've had good customers coming in, not just from here in Bahrain, but from around the GCC as well. So very positive, very happy. So my name is Simon Larkham, I work for a company called Airborne Systems with uh, leaders in the design, development and manufacture of aerial delivery equipment here and personnel parachuting equipment. Our latest product is the ATAX aerial delivery platform. This is a modular system which is designed for land and water delivery of vehicles and boats. It's a modular system which is easy to fit together and will take up to a 16 tonne payload. With the personnel parachute equipment that we manufacture, we have a number of static line systems 
that are designed for a low level requirement of 250 foot. We're looking to bring new products into Bahrain and strike up a joint venture and a collaboration with Bahrain. We're looking to take our products that are cleared on the C-130 for aerial delivery and get them into the Bahrain market. We found it a good exhibition. Uh, day one's been pretty busy. We've met with some influential people that we wanted to talk to and show them our products and it's been really good and the same again this morning. My name's Michael Vincent. Uh, I'm the head of sales for Prime Take. Prime Take is a UK based company and we're a manufacturer and developer of specialised ammunition. We specialise in a number of different types of ammunition from inert types of product where they're used for scaring and distur disturbing birds from airfields and uh, runways all the way through to match grade accurate sniper ammunition. In between we also have a range of tactical 12 gauge ammunition often used by elite counter-terror units or special forces units uh, to effect entry into a premises to deliver incapacitants and also to offer non-lethal options in terms of crowd dispersion and crowd control. PrimeTech has been operating for 25 years now. We have a number of contracts across the world with a number of the elite units um, of special forces teams. The Middle East in particular is a region strategically that's very important to PrimeTech. We've been developing cells here for a number of years. The Bahraini Defence Force are already utilising some of our sniper ammunition and we're here really as an active opportunity to say hello and to introduce them and reintegrate our new products that we've been launching um, over the last 12 months to the BDF. The exhibition has been really good for us in terms of the development of our brand within the region. We obviously are looking to make further sales within the, the Gulf as, as, a, as a whole. Um, strategically, Saudi Arabia is very interesting to us. We have some, some conversations ongoing with a number of parties there. Um, we still continue to have our discussions with the likes of Bahrain and Oman and it's been a really good opportunity for us to get to see some of the end users, some of the contacts and some of the agents that we deal with and to really develop the, the Prime Tech brand which is something that we've been really keen to do in the Gulf.